What's going on everybody, Gar Hoover here, and today we're going to be looking at the Woove box, and we're going to look specifically at my track Voyager, but many of you asked specifically, what's the difference between the Woove box and something like a pocket operator, because pocket operators, we, you know I love them, you know I love especially the PO33 and how simple and easy it is to use and how direct it is, but something like the Woove box, it might look the same form factor wise, but it is a completely different beast and goes way 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 deeper and that's why it took so long I've had this for months but I was still trying to figure out all the different components of it and make sure to make a quality song on it there's certainly already more of a learning curve with the woof box than with a pocket operator but there's also so much more to it it goes way deeper and so throughout this video as I break down my track we're also going to be looking at the differences between the woof box and pocket operators. Also, be sure to check the chapters down below if you're looking to just figure out how I made the song or if you want to hear some insights on how the Woof Box is different than the pocket operators. So please take a look at the chapters as we go through it. And with that being said, let's get started looking at this track Voyager, which I made on the Woof Box. All right, so one of the first things I want to talk about with the Woof Box is that it is a sampler and is also a synthesizer. And one of the best parts about the synthesizer is that it's a two oscillator synthesizer at its core, but it has, I have no idea, I think seven, eight, nine different synthesizer engines ranging from just standard subtractive synthesis to three different forms of FM to some ring mod stuff, amplitude modulation, maybe it's just seven, but it feels like more than enough. And with that, you can make all your drum sounds, you can make uh, those like one shot type of things for drums with kicks, snares, hi-hats, all that stuff, or you can upload your own samples. I did a mixture of that for this song, but as we look at the samples, or not samples, uh, the sources of the sounds for this song, I'm starting with the chord track, which is its own distinct uh, synth, which is really cool. It can play chords, as you might expect. Right now, we've got this cool chord pad coming in, and you can see it says C minor 7 when I press it, or it can say C major or D major. And so each of these eight becomes a designated chord, which is really cool because then you can have, I have C minor or... or, or minor seven chords and major chords up top and they can jump between the two. And so that means I have a full range of chords that I would use in a scale which keeps it very clean and simple. And this is just a standard subtractive synthesis um, algorithm. And how you get through it is there's all these different settings, but then you get to the back pages and you get to oscillators. So you have oscillator one, oscillator two, and all of these have different parameters that you can adjust. So that's, you can see I'm using a saw wave uh, for that and saw wave there. And then you can see the level that it's used and you can hear it always, it kind of shows you where you're at as you tweak it live, which is great, how it's affected by the filters, other things like that. And then you keep going, you get an amplitude page, which is awesome. So you have each of the oscillators has its own uh, envelope. And you also have an LFO for amplitude, which is sweet. And then on top of that, you've got a filter. And the filters, there's lots of filter types from high pass to low pass to band pass. You get the full range, which is great for making drums, pads, whatever, you name it. Great, great sounding filters, especially for being just like a small little synth here. For being digital, it's really really fun especially because you can drive them with distortion built in so with that you also have a whole pitch page where you can adjust portamento and slides and things you can pan the stuff there's a, there's a compressor there's a, you can also save patches so or you can just kind of have it per song and not really save it which is what i'm doing right now uh, which is pretty bold but then on top of that you can tweak so much whatever you would want to really tweak you can on the synth so that's kind of going to cover the bases i'm not going to go into detail about every single synth um, in this because it will be too long of a video but please know it is an incredibly deep flexible synthesizer if that was hoping like when i got my op uh, z I was hoping that the synth engine would be more of a traditional synth engine where you could tweak it and get a full range of sounds rather than it being kind of each one kind of gets 
caught in a lane where it's like, oh, this is kind of for flutes and hollow sounds, kind of square wave-esque, or you have the saw wave generator one. This, you can make all of your classic synth sounds at uh, with relative ease once you understand how to tweak. So once you hold down a button, you can twist this knob, and that's the dedicated knob for it. So it's pretty intuitive. You just have to learn the different patterns and pages and what the abbreviations mean. But it's pretty simple, really. But that's the cool part about the chord page. And then so from there, uh, we obviously have my bass sound, which is... And you can hear it's only playing one note. And that's because it ha I have it set to chord follow mode. And you can hear that. You can hear the chord kind of lingering in the background if you listen closely. And what that means is I can punch in a pattern if we go to uh, right and we see my patterns and how they're being played out here on these different dots. I just have a rhythm playing and every single time the chord changes, the bass line will follow that. And so I just have the root note playing for this song. Um, and it's very simple. I have one octave jump and I programmed in that um, using some of the cool perks you can do with this. I believe it's on this one. But you hold down right. Let's pretend we're doing it somewhere over here. Let's add in a note. So that's good to go. Sorry, I did not give myself a good angle to see this. Um, but if we write it in, you can hold it, and then from there it tells you the note. You can adjust the velocity per step, which is dope. You can change the length so you can make it more of a tight little hit like you could on a PO33. You can shift it. You can also do these conditional triggers. So this is where it's like one of four or always, and it keeps going. You can look at all these variations. And you can do probability as well, which is awesome for drums. So you can do that. And then what happens during that step? So I can have it play. I can have it slide. So it's great for like a 303. You can also have it jump up an octave, which is what I actually have it programmed to do, which is cool. Every other pattern. And then you can have it go down. You can have it slide up an octave. You can have it um, different. There's... You can see how many different variations. You can have it um, trigger several times on the step. So you can get real quick, cool. Um, you can hear all that. You can have a jump up by different semitones, which is, it's just insane the amount of stuff you can do. But I don't really need that. So I'm just going to remove it. And so that's the bass line. The bass line super simple. That's that. And then after that, we got a great lead line, and you can hear the delay on it. And so how you get that, you go to the global, and you can add reverb, and you can add delays, and you can adjust these in the song setting. So each song has its own. You can adjust the effects accordingly for the song. So I could do a different speed delay, different sounding reverb type of parameters, just those. You can also do the distortion. If I really wanted to make it obnoxious, I don't know how loud this is going to be. Not too bad. And you can do a reverse distortion. So I'm done doing that because I don't want to ruin your ears. But it's awesome. There's a bit crush. There's a saturation. So you can get... You, if you really crank that, that gets funky. There's a lot of different things that you can add per sound. So you get a lot of... Even if you were to use the presets, if you tweak them... They, they, have, they don't sound anything like what they used to, so no one's like, oh, you're just using the presets on it, even though the presets really do sound great. And so from there, so whenever you want to switch, you just hold down this uh, encoder, which you can press in, which is great. It's an endless encoder. Works well, a little wobbly, um, but, I mean, I'm not going to complain about that because it's a giant knob, so, of course, it's going to emphasize the wobble a little bit more. Um, but that makes it great rather than trying to mess with one of the tidying ones on a pocket operator can be a little tricky and these aren't endless so when you adjust things obviously when you switch to a different setting you go to tweak it again it jumps to wherever it's at right then um, in the twist so with the endless though it just goes to where it's set and then you can twist up and down from that point if that makes sense that's why I like endless encoders though they can be a little trickier um, you can also solo sound so if I solo this You can hear there's a lot going on. And this is the arpeggiator, which is sweet too. So I get them pick the notes. 
and I have it set to follow the chord as well. So everything's always in key. That's the best part. You can put stuff together so quick and it all plays by the scale or by the chord. So it follows the chords. This is on chord follow mode once again. I have it being panned left and right. So it's getting a little bit more ear candy. This is stereo, another perk as well, which is great. And then you got the drums going on. So if we solo the drums... You can hear that's a that's just a standard synthesized kick super chill super simple um, very fun to make the kicks on this and you can bring down the pop and the click with the f or not the fm the filter um, making fm kicks is really fun or you can do subtractive uh, a, a algorithm which is just a standard synthesis that's great for kicks you can just crank the resonance and drop that or you can do it with the pitch either way it works great snare you can get, you can hear the tone is a little bit different, um, and that's great too. You can jump between the snare sound, sounds good. You can add distortion. That's a great trip tick, uh, tip for making the uh, hi-hat sounds. Everything on here is adding a little bit of distortion and then putting some uh, high-pass or band-pass on it really makes it shine. So you can hear, it sounds like a very simple, strange hi-hat, but at certain frequencies, because it is getting modulated, it, it pulls out different tones. As you can hear there, it sounds a little bit different, but then when I solo my hi-hat, it's, it's very... Um, just like classic, simple sounding, but you can also sample. So if you're not the type that likes to sit down and tweak and make strange sounds, you can just upload all of your classic stuff too. And then you got percussion sounds. So here I have kind of a weird ride, which is super fun. Threw some delay on that. What other sounds? Another snare. So this is one I use for the build at the bridge. If you ever listen through all the way to the bridge, you hear another sounds come in. The snare is used there. Um, this is also just used for the builds in general. Uh, pretty fun. And so these ones, as you can see, this is chord, bass, lead, arp, kick, snare, hi-hat, perk. These don't have to be assigned to these, but that's their natural preset. And then these are just open. So you can assign them to whatever program you want. So this is where we have the, where I uploaded my own samples. Just weird clicks and perk sounds. And then I just kind of went crazy with those. Um, I'll explain how you sequence them in a little bit. So I did that. This is this is a white noise. Let me see if I can just solo it. We'll have to wait a second. You can see I have this as a longer pattern. Awesome. Sounds so good. Classic white noise sound getting just panned up. Um, you can find that in the effects section. That's one of the other settings you can do. And so that's just using the internal um, white noise generator um, and then just using the filter to sweep it. Sounds awesome, really cool. Panning left and right adds also some additional intrigue before the drop and then it kind of focuses in as a mono single signal for that, for the drop. You can hear this is kind of a weird, almost wub that's pretty distorted and strange. Um, I'm trying to remember which setting. Yeah, I have it on an FM, an FM mode, which is super cool um, because they, they, they bring out whole different tones. So this I love because I love making really strange FM sounds and you can get that out of this, which I didn't expect. So I have another song that's kind of like a bass house track I'm working on that'll come out, which displays more of that kind of aggressive FM sound. I also have a distorted, like kind of 303 sound on it. It's going to be really fun. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, so if, shameless plug, if you want to see that, be sure to be subscribed, like this video so that more of my content pops up. Um, thank you for letting me rant. Also, got a clap made on here it's a clap from this so what i did to make this clap and then there were i think there was also some preset claps uh it's a uh, saw really fast saw lfo for amplitude with a 
um, band pass on the white noise that creates a peak that's a tone and then you just have the standard amplitude uh, envelope dropping so that the claps get quieter near the end and so you make a clap sound like that super cool super fun I think that might be it because that's the sample area so let's stay out of that for now so that's that but now we're going to get into the complicated stuff which will be the patterns which we'll take a look at next all right we're going to get started looking at the patterns i kind of changed the camera angle so i could actually see the leds from a better angle for me selfishly uh so with this in comparison to a pocket operator when you look at a pocket operator you're like okay i'm going to go to pattern one and you go to pattern one and you're on pattern one for whatever's the selected sound and for every other sound. So everything takes place on that pattern. It's all existing there, whether you like it or not, or you pick nothing for it, and that's how it goes. And everything's kind of compartmentalized to one pattern. And so if you wanted a bass line to go across, uh, let's say, four patterns, not really with the tonic, but with a different one, um, you would have to copy-paste it across all four and then tweak it. But then the drum pattern and maybe something else are all going to remain the same across all of those patterns. So just for better sake of illustration, let me just use this one. Uh, but with this, it's completely different. It's completely different, which is it, it had it took a while for my brain to just get wrapped around it as a concept because I can have one mode for chord. Let's pretend we're looking at the chord mode and let's put on solo um, and just go to sequence mode. So you can see I have a chord pick for each of these steps. Pretty simple. But I also have the pattern. So this is only technically one pattern, but I have the resolution of the pattern at a different uh, different division. So it's at four instead of one. Because I've, if I did it to one, it's going to treat this like a standard 16 step pattern. Let's, let's hear what that sounds like just for fun. Sounds awful because the attack is so slow for the pad, but when I divide it, and we go over to the sequence, you can see it's treating it differently. So you can't do that on a pocket operator. That's much more in line with what you see on the OPZ. So this is where this thing is kind of the strange love child of a OPZ and a pocket operator. And it's But it's completely its own thing at the same time. I don't want people to think, oh, they copied Teenage Engineering. In some ways, maybe they did with form factor, but the creativity behind this thing is it's all of its own and the works flow is completely distinct you it's hard to compare this and this um these are in completely different ballparks no offense to this this is just a more simple design than this because um, obviously you heard that pattern it's 16 steps but it's different because it's going across four patterns long but when you add the baseline or or the arpeggiator it completely will yes the arpeggiator if we looked at that mode again the arpeggiator, I have it set to what what it's only a 16 step pattern. So it's literally one fourth of the length of the chord mode, but because I have it following the chords. So it's doing it and now it's changed chords, changed again, and changed again. Super, super cool because you get so much more longevity out of your patterns doing this. It's so amazing. It's the same thing with the bass line as I talked about earlier. It's only one pattern that's being used, but just because it's using, these are all on pattern one, whatever's the pattern for the chord. So if I'm on pattern one for that chord and I have all of the other instruments following that chord pattern, it's going, the bass needs to be on pattern one as well, or or if I change it to pattern two, the rhythm's gonna be different, but it's gonna still follow whatever chords I have selected. It's kind of complicated in that way. But all that to say, let's talk about patterns could be simple, but they're not, because you have a whole different mode that's called fragments, which is this FR. So I press the song mode, now we're in song mode, and this is where the magic really happens. Because as you'll see, 
when I hit play, yes, we have the chords. Yes, we have the arpeggiator. You'll hear the chords doing their thing. This is the intro to the song. But in this mode, you can add additional effects and techniques and things that really add intrigue to the pattern itself. So with this, I actually have it set behavior filter. And what it's doing is over this four bars, which you can change that mode too, change the amount of bars that something goes. Um, I have it going for the four bar loop and it's going to gradually bring the filter up as you hear on the arpeggiator. So right now, all you hear is the chords going, and then you hear the arpeggiator. And that's how it goes, which is so cool. And so you're already, that would take, if I was doing it on this, I would have to punch in the chords, which would take four patterns, unless I did a cheat where I actually made it twice as slow and just, but then my resolution on my patterns is different. It would take all four of these. And then for me to gradually bring up the arpeggiator, arpeggiator, I would have to twist this and record it in. This, I just have to program one button and say, yeah, let's just do, let's just have the filter sweep in. And so that would have already taken up four of my patterns. But on this, I have no problem. I can, it's almost limitless in how I approach each of these different fragments because I can get so much more longevity out of one pattern. Remember, I'm only on one pattern for this, one pattern for this, one pattern for this. And, and so it's great to see how much you can get. Even if you aren't that experienced with it, you can go so far. And then so right now you can see only the chord and the arpeggio are selected. But if I wanted, I could turn on the bass as well. And how I do that is hold down right and add the bass. And so I'm just adding the bass in. You'll hear the bass play as well. So it's almost like a mixer, but it has so much more it can do on top of that. So let me just show it with a, since we're kind of mangling this, let's add, you could fade it in. That's fun. Let's do the pitch up. So we really feel this is going to be, I don't know what's going to happen. really trippy but that shows it perfectly you can you can get so much out of it imagine how you can do that with drums as I'll talk about later you can get awesome drum fills and things with that effect so fragments are different than patterns fragments are how you control the patterns you've created I think that's the best way I can try and explain this and so right now we've got that that and that's the intro cool and then I jump to my second fragment. And so the cool part is it plays linearly. So you you just kind of, you create fragment, 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 and then you just hit play and it just plays through them all effortlessly. You don't have to try and memorize all of the different patterns as I usually do. And I go like pattern one to pattern two to pattern three to pattern four to pattern five or whatever obnoxious code I have to try and remember to try and remember my uh, entire song and all of its length. This, you can kind of just figure out, okay, I don't want the drums in for this or I want the snare to come in with this part. I have the arpeggiator chord going. I've got the high or my kick, my snare, my percussion, which we'll talk about, which are those samples. And also I try to remember what this is. We'll figure it out. Oh, those are the samples. This was the ride. So you can hear one pattern, one pattern, one pattern, and it's just looping uh, for the four, for the chords to work their way through for the four bars, which is great. But as you might have heard, my percussion is a two pattern loop. And so that's where we're going to have to get a little bit more complicated here because each of the sound settings, so all the clicks and snaps and things you've heard, we're on pattern two right now. But if we go to pattern one, we can see... Oh, this is where it's going to get crazy because all if you hit play without it being in fragment mode, all the songs that have something on or all the sounds that have something on pattern one will play all at once. And so it's always good to just 
I just solo it to keep it clean. And you can hear, originally I thought I had something on this pattern, which I do not. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hold down play and click pattern two and then check pattern three. Pattern three, we also have something going on. So what I did was you go to pattern and you, it tell, you can instruct it which pattern to jump to next. And so for this one, I just had it jump to pattern three, change to pattern three after it runs through the 16 steps. And then um, if we go to pattern three, I have it change back to two. And so it's just a constant loop between those two patterns for this, these drum sounds. And you can hear I have different conditional triggers and clicks and things where things are being re-triggered by just holding down whatever sequence step it's on. So if you go back to the sequencer, if I wanted to adjust this, let's say, I could hold it down and then uh, add, or let's do this because it's more obvious. We know what it is. And then always, let's not do play. Let's do... Let's multiply it by eight because we're obnoxious. So you could hear that. It does the super clicks. So we could do that. We're not going to do that. We're just going to have it do nothing. Just play. So that's how you work that. Pretty fun. Pretty cool stuff with the drums. So I have it so it's constantly playing between those two patterns. But as you notice, this is on pattern two, not pattern one. So when we go to our fragment, we're going to check this out. And we're going to go here. I'm going to hold it down. And behavior, play. Yes, we want it to play. And we've selected not pattern one, but pattern two. So it's going to play from pattern two. But as we programmed on the pattern of pattern two, it jumps to three. And then it jumps back to two. So that's where we're just going to get the mileage out of it. Doing all those fun clicks and things. It's just going to keep looping and looping and looping and looping. And so that's how you get the cool clicks. Once again, the snare, like some of these tracks, it's not even worth showing you because they're so simple. But we're going to do it anyway. So the snare, as you can see, just boom, 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 boom. Down, down the row, and for if you're doing something from 140 to let's say 160, something like that for drum and bass, whatever, that's how it's going to look. Is third column down is just going to be a steady snare hit. If you wanted to do halftime, you would put it at the first hit of each of these, um, but we're not doing that, so that's pretty simple. And then this perk sound, as you can see, it's two different rides, but they're not playing every like a standard one pattern 16 steps we have it divided to four just like we did with the chord track so when we hold this down and solo it you can see it's taking way longer to get through those steps so you can get a lot more mileage out of your patterns so that's pretty fun and so with that that's fragments pretty much and you can see I've adjusted the length of the different fragments, but this is so you have the chords and then you got the first part of the verse essentially here. And then we have it where the bass comes in, which is also just one pattern, but because the chords change over the pattern, it takes so long because it's divided by four, you get so much more out of it. But you can also see it's eight, eight bars. So we're really stretching this. And so how you can change that is pretty cool. Um, you, can, you can clone, you can insert fragments and stuff. This is not actually the right thing I wanted to do. Uh, I don't want this. Uh, I'm not going to delete it. Let's just clone it for fun. Um, and then if I paste it, it'll come up some other time. But if we were to, uh, you can adjust this um, by... I think it's just by twisting. Yeah, there we go. I pressed the wrong thing. Still figuring it out, but I can adjust the length of it. What if I just wanted this to be one bar? 
that's it. It's only going to play that much, but because I have it playing eight, And so let's jump over to the build in the next section. You can hear the chords are still going, but you had the lead line come in. And the lead line is the same thing, where it's two different patterns that have been chained together, and it's just jumping between the two patterns. Um, I think it's two. Might be more than that. Might be a four-pattern loop. Let's just check it out. Um... Okay, pattern, length, it's not divided, okay, chain, next. So it goes from one to two. You can hear the bass is going crazy because it's, it's not changing with the chords. So this is a four pattern loop, pretty fun. And, and with the delay, it just gives it so much more mileage. Sorry, this is such a long video. Maybe you're okay with that, though. Anyway. You can hear I have this extra snare activated. And all I'm doing is, if we look at this pattern, I'm not doing anything crazy. I just have all of these illuminated. And I just change the velocity of the different hits. So you can see that one's 127. This one's 84. So it's this alternating hit rhythm that adds some movement and life to it, but they're all technically doing the same thing. They're all the same pitch. It's all the same pitch. It's until I put it in a fragment that it gets manipulated because now when I go to the fragment, I have it doing that pitch up effect that we did on the bass originally, and it's just doing the same pattern looping it and looping it but now it's bringing the pitch up across four bars so you can create these cool effects and that's where we also bring in the uh, white noise and for this I mean for the course it's super simple too I have it where some of these I switch up the hi-hats and so I change the pattern style and I just switch to pattern two or something instead for this if we look at it play okay pattern one but for the previous section if we were to go to like this i don't even think i had hi-hats going but it's on pattern two um so those are just straight hi-hats if you hear them and then these are the ones where they get the cool rolls and kind of trappish almost um just to add some interest <laughs> Here there's added snare hits too. Instead of the clean snares, we've actually added two alternate snares going on. But you can see we're on pattern three for that. So if we were to jump to this pattern, you can see it that it's the standard hits. And now we have these additional little accents that come in and out that are conditionally triggered to activate every other or every time, but are just uh, lower velocity and a different pitch, which is pretty cool. So that's kind of how that's going. So if we go back to the fragments, this is only a six bar fragment. So you'll see what I did for that. Hold on, something's going on where it's kind of glitching up a little bit. Okay, there we go. I don't know why it's saying four. So for some reason, the the image that's being projected on an LCD was not accurate to what was taking place. But what was going on, I had a six bar loop that was playing the chorus. Though it keeps saying it's four, it's not. Um, perhaps there's something I'm doing wrong. But this is six bars, and then you have the two bar where it's everything else is cut out except for the lead and the bass and the pads which is cool that you can program it so 
If you only have six bars of it doing one thing, you can have the last two bars on another fragment where you're removing sounds or adjusting the sounds, doing effects to them so that they aid in a transition into a new section, which is all I did for this, which is all I did was just copy paste what I had done for the initial verses. Yeah, it's just showing what was the previous pattern, which is interesting, or fragment instead. So please ignore that. But that's, that's how you just build songs on this, is you just copy-paste the fragments from previous sections, and then you can build it up into something fun. Um, or you can add bridges, which is what I did here. You can hear the bass has changed, so I went to a different pattern for the bass, different pattern for the kick, different snares, different everything else. I just, it's the same sounds I just change the rhythms but because you can have upwards of like I think it's what 13 at least uh, sounds that are actively going that's pretty amazing you can get a lot of mileage out of those sounds without it sounding like oh this is kind of monotonous or something because you can change the frequency of the sounds per pattern whatever else and it still sounds really good and fun um, but you could hear with this I added those claps in. We've got that new kind of weird bass line going. The snare building. And then going back into the classic chorus. But with the new uh, kind of weird wubs going on. So it's that's pretty much all I'm going to talk about for today because this is already a long video. But if you have any questions about the Woof Box, please leave them down in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. Or if I'm not able to answer them, their, their website is so in-depth. They have a great tutorial section with all of the different steps and uh, decoding all of the different language that's on the LCD screen or LED screen. Excuse me and everything else that's going on with it. Super, super thorough uh, web page. And it's got its own Bluetooth connection too, so that's insane. Um, it also has MIDI that you can send out, um, and uh, or MIDI's out over here, and you can uh, sample things into it. So everything, they thought about everything for this. So you can upload samples through Bluetooth onto this too, which is awesome. And you don't really see that in much other small tech like this so really impressed with the woof box i look forward to continuing to get more creative with it exploring it there's so many different conditional triggers and things i haven't explored that i'm really excited to try out to get some mileage out of my patterns but as i mentioned i only used maybe one to two patterns per sound and it's just working the fragments um, and getting them on and off and, and adding effects and other or just like the those kind of I guess their effects where it's going up in pitch or fading in filters things like that that just really add mileage to it in a way because when you think about it songs don't really like on a pocket operator I'm going to use up all 16 of my patterns so fast just because it, it, it has to contain everything and so four bars is this is four bars already one two three four but on this four bars can be only take up 16 steps for one but then the bass line is also a, only a 16 step rhythm but it's playing the different notes for each chord as it goes by so it ends up becoming a four bar loop which is super cool great great uh design and technique i love uh, working with it, it's it's becoming one of my favorite go-tos. Uh, great for travel. It comes with an awesome little box. And so I look forward to using it more. If you have a Woof box, uh, let me know how you're enjoying it. And uh, just please leave me some questions down below. Uh, I'm sure I didn't cover everything with the differences between the pocket operators in it. But yeah, just let me know if you guys have any more questions. And I'll see you in the next video. See ya.